I've been talking to some folks online and they wanted to see if a BIOS mod could be done on these machines. And actually, the Flex 5 can have its BIOS modded. And I'll just show you the mod that was done to my machine specifically. So you can see here, uh, my the folks I was talking to added this hidden page switch. Uh, when it's disabled, or basically when this is set to 0x0, it enables a number of extra options here. You can see we have the main exit, and then we have these two options. This is main, it's like a very basic inside H2O like default menu. You can see we've got some system info here. You can see that we have two 8GIG modules that are soldered at 3200 MHz. Boot features, you can see we have all these options. CSM support is set to no, quick boots on, etc. etc. Uh, you could enable, yeah, you could enable USB legacy, etc. Um, there's the potential where you could flash a modded BIOS on this system without having to use a flash clip. Uh, like, for instance, I have this flash clip here. It's just for clamping on to SOCI 8 uh, flash SPI ROMs. And that's what I used to rewrite the BIOS on this system. I didn't do it through normal flashing means, but there might be a way to do that. It's worth looking into. I'm sure there's <laughs> the enthusiast BIOS modding community is going to figure it out eventually. But yeah, so this is possible. I'll hit escape here again. And we have network stack. Just, you know typical error manager which just kind of allows you to view errors and there's firmware update which allows you to browse to a uh, storage medium and install a BIOS update now we have the interesting part so we have platform which just kind of allows you to do like AMD platform crap uh, there's this and this is just you can switch which display output it does natively um, and I don't want to change this because I don't know <laughs> um, if it will actually work because this is untested for the most part because um, you can see you can see well it only says EDP so it doesn't really matter I think when you have HDMI plugged in it will show HDMI but I don't really want to try <laughs> um, so you can see we've got all this stuff I mean I'll just scroll through this Okay, and we just hit this and there you go, AMD firmware version. Interesting. Uh, now we have CBS, and this is where you can do all the cool stuff. So we have a CPU thing, you can mess with all of these, I mean, tons of options. Uh, there's the core watchdog, which is, you know, a watchdog. You can enable it or disable it or set it to auto, whatever you want. There's prefetcher. There's prefetcher settings you can set. I don't know what that is. There's performance. And you can edit the core P state. We'll just accept. And there you go. You can, you know, do this and set it to custom. And there you go. And you can, s whoops. You can set it to auto. Cool. Okay. By the way, since these are all stock to the BIOS technically, when you hit F9, it will actually reset. And if you do anything in here that's weird, uh, generally, if you just go into the bottom case and unplug the battery from the laptop and do a little power flush and then plug it in uh, via AC. It's basically like a CMOS clear. I mean, the BIOS settings won't apply until you save them again, which is interesting, but cool. So yeah, just hit F9 if something goes wrong and it should fix it. Memory addressing. I mean, there's a, there's a I'm just doing a little walk through here. Now what we were able to do is, uh, Oh yeah, overclock, you can set a bunch of crap manually if you want. Uh, we have the DRAM controller. Uh, CAD bus stuff. Data bus. 
press. E oh yeah, you can enable ECC here. So if you have a laptop that doesn't natively allow you to use ECC, but it has an AMD 4000 chip that's not like a pro model, then if you do the BIOS mod, you should be able to actually go in and enable ECC, so. So yeah, if you want to use ECC, you could. We'll just get out of there because we can't because the memory is soldered. So it wasn't even doesn't even make a difference for us. More security, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I mean, there's this here, DRAM stuff. Uh, we have the physical configuration, which is like memory training. And VDIM, nothing. I believe that has to do with VRAM. I don't know. Memory Embist, uh, I don't know what this is. Someone might, if you do, well, there you go. That's cool. Uh, we also have this, which is this end bio is the most interesting section because you can do all kinds of weird stuff. I would not touch this. <laughs> this is scary. Uh, we can touch audio configuration. I don't know what the point of that is, but XFR enhancement. This is where you can do cool stuff. You can set the uh, F clock here. Um, you, if you had to accept, you can also enable PBO. Uh, when you set the F clock here, it won't clock down by default. It won't clock down like it does by default because usually it'll clock down to like 800 megahertz or lower and boost up to like 1200 sometimes 1600 but if you set it to 1600 here which is about what people would refer to as perfect no this is what people this is pretty much what people uh, people would call this pretty much perfect people would call this pretty much perfect um And uh, since 1600 is about half of 3200, then it works pretty much perfectly. Um, your your RAM is in sync with the F clock, which is ideal for AMD. Uh, we also have SMU. I mean, this gives you all kinds of weird stuff. You can go to CPPC and you know set this to enabled and like adjust a bunch of crap. Uh, you can set this to a higher state. There's all kinds of cool options here. Uh, there's smart shift, which if you set to manual, then you can like adjust things, which is odd. I mean, if you set this to enabled, then I don't know. You don't really get any more options. But since we don't have uh, a DGPU, it doesn't really make a difference for us. So that's a sh that's a shame. I do have a Nitro 5 that does though. So hmm. Uh, we have Stapum control. Which, if I set this to manual, you'll see that there's step and boost. And if I set this to enable, then it tells me a time constraint. If I disable it, then it's disabled. I'll leave it on auto, because I don't know. We also have system temperature tracking. And again, I, I'm, I might sell this. I don't know. Just let me know in the comments if you want to buy this laptop. I will be detailing how you bios mod but if you want a bios modded flex 5 i will be selling one and if you want multiple then i i don't know like if a bunch of people want them then i guess i could just start buying and selling modded flex 5 <laughs> like, eh. it's up to you guys i don't really care um yeah so there's all this crap woohoo um i don't know what any of it means i haven't been able to make it do anything uh, there's fan control. This is not that interesting. You can set it to enable PWM, and if you do this, then it's like, I don't know, you can adjust these settings, but I don't really know what they do. I haven't explored it, and I don't believe it's terribly cool, so don't worry about that. Uh, we have the FCH, uh, which is just a bunch of crap. We have SATA controller. This does not have a SATA port, so it doesn't matter. USB. Uh, AC power loss, which is cool if you actually want to convert this to like an AIO or something, then you could just have it, you know, do this with the BIOS mod. You have I2C, whatever. UART, which, yeah, okay. Uh, ESPI. Uh, gigabit. 
LPC. I don't know what this is. Doesn't really do anything. So I'll just set this to auto. And HFP. Uh, I, which is, has a typo. Anibal. I don't know what that is. Uh, SOC miscellaneous. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this is. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much everything you can see. We got a different menu here. I can set this to like boot to boot menu, and then. So yeah, that's all for the Flex Five here. Um, if you enjoyed my content, please make sure you're subscribed again. I've got to get to 1K for monetization, and that will help support a lot more content in the future. So if you liked it, be sure to sub, uh, be sure to like, comment, etc. Join the Discord if you're interested in participating in the community. You can always donate to the Patreon or use the links in the description to support the channel financially and directly. Otherwise, that's it for today, and I hope this video was helpful.